This is called Shake Console and it's made by this editor here. It's not a plugin or an extension, it's a preset made for After Effects and it's completely free to download in the description below. To install this preset you want to download it and extract the file. Then what you're going to do is copy these two folders so both of them should contain two presets for each folder. Highlight both of them, right click and select cut. Then you want to head to the directory where your presets are stored. So this will depend on where you have installed After Effects. So mine is on my D drive, program files, Adobe After Effects with the version. So mine's 2022, supports files, presets. However, yours might be located in this directory. It's in the description below, so you can just copy and paste. But yeah, just look for this support files, presets and you want to paste these folders here. So right click, paste and continue for both. There you go, all done. Now it's time to use the preset. But first, have you added motion tile onto your clip? It may be necessary depending on what kind of style you want to go for. So what this does is it adds a reflection around the edges of your clip. So if you did not have motion tile, it would look like this instead of this which again is totally up to you. So if you're making a jug edit, you might want it, you might not. It depends on your preference. I am going to keep it. So if you want to do the same and you would like a reflection, change the output width and the height both to around 200 and turn on the mirror edges. But if you're still seeing any black lines or borders around your clip, then just turn the amount up for both of these until they're gone. Okay, now that's sorted, let's try and use Shake Console. This is going to be a very brief overview. I'm not going to go into detail. So you want to add an adjustment layer and add on Shake Console directly. Collapse this layer here, which says minimize this. So click on the arrow. And now you'll see that there are a few options. You've got Expression Shake, Constant, Float and Scale. So which one should you use? I would say it's mostly down to personal preference. However, there is a text file included within the pack which goes into more detail explaining what each of these settings do. Feel free to read this in your own time. But basically, with the expression shake, there are more options. You can control the X, Y and the rotation settings independently. X meaning left and right for the shake, Y meaning up and down and R meaning rotation. On the other hand, you've got Constant Shake, which clearly doesn't have as many settings as Expression Shake, but it's much easier to use. I think Constant is supposed to be X and Y combined into one, leaving out the rotation because that one's clearly separate. Oh, and also, if you don't know what frequency and amplitude means, frequency is how strong the shake is, and amplitude is how far it travels. If the frequency is higher, it's going to be much faster. If it's lower, it's going to be much slower. If you want a shake that travels further, then you would increase the amplitude. But if you want a softer looking shake, then you would decrease it. Okay, now I'm going to show you some examples. So first up, I've got expression shakes. So this was my attempt at using them. It's not the best. As I said, it's just an example. So here's how it looks. So for this, I keyframe the X amplitude. Y amplitude, rotation, and also I used the scale shake, which I will explain in just a second, but that's what I did. It starts off with a low X shake, so it's only set at 15. The Y is very high, 300, and then the rotation is set to negative six. What happens is that it slows down over time or just decreases, I guess is the best way to put it. As you can see here, they've all been set to zero which means there is no movement, which is what I meant by it slows down over time. And then it slowly picks back up right where the new clip starts. So I put some, I placed more keyframes here and increased the X, Y and rotation amplitude. So you can see uh, I've got 564, 101, eight, and then repeat what I did at the start. So it just slows down over time, speeds back up and that makes it loop. So this is what it looks like. Of course, that's not everything. I had to graph them as well. So if I just open up the graph for the X amplitude, you can see this is what it looks like. Start off fast, slow down, slow down, slow down, speed back up and then slow down again, then speed back up at the end. So that was the expression. What I'm going to do is now show you the constant, which is way easier than expression. So all I had to do was keyframe the constant 
uh, amplitude and also the one for the rotation, which looks like this. And although it looks fairly simple, I think it looks pretty decent. You can see that I've gone heavy on the rotation. It's very easy to notice and it works really well for a clip like this, I think. Again, same procedure with the graph. So it slows down, speeds up, slows down and then speeds up again, just with different settings. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward to use. So those were two examples for expression and constant. Now, next up is float shake. If you've ever used a shake before, this is basically used to make a wiggle shake. Or is it like a panning shake? I don't know what it's called. So what I could do is just increase the amplitude. So let's go for two. And now I've got a wiggle shake. Well, you can't actually see it. Uh, one sec. That was clearly not high enough. So let's go for 75 instead. So here's how it looks. You can, of course, speed it up. So let's go for a float frequency of two. And what I might also do, actually, first of all, let's decrease the amount of float. So the amplitude, I'm going to set that to 40 and add some rotation. So let's go for 0.5. Let's see how that looks. This one is very straightforward. Um, just like the other settings, you can add keyframes, do what you want, play around. With that being said, the final one is a scale shake. And you've guessed it, it controls the Z or Z axes, however you want to call it. I call it Z. So I could decrease this, which will zoom in. Let's go for negative 20. Let's see how this looks without any keyframing done. So this creates a pulsating like effect. And what you can do is keyframe this just like the others. So first of all, I'm going to increase the frequency. Let's go for four. See how that looks. OK, much faster. So what I'm going to do is set this to negative 30. Keyframe the Z dist. I mean, the Z amplitude. I forgot that this is an S shake and I'm going to graph this. So I'm just going to double click. Uh, excuse my keyframing. I'm not the best, but I'm going to keyframe it here. So zero highlight both of these. F9, open up the graph. All right, let's see how this looks. Well, that's not good. So I'm going to increase the frequency. Let's go for seven, perhaps. I mean, it's better. Not re I don't really know. Uh, I'm going to decrease this. Let's go for sure. Something like that. Might need to regraph this. Yeah, OK, so I'm just going to pull that up. And this is what it looks like. I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, there you go. It worked. Perfect. So now if I go back to the expression shake that I showed you earlier, you can see how I used the Z amplitude to create this combined with the actual expression shake itself. So this is how it looks. It kind of scales in and then bounces at the beginning. It's hard to tell, but it's there. And with that being said, that's it for the overview for Shake Console. Thank you to my members as always for your monthly support. And thank you for watching to the very end. I'll see you next time. Peace.